It's really important to be a generous giver and an excellent receiver. Think about that. When you give, you find joy in giving, but if you're not willing to ever ask for help, how does so you're depriving your friends and other people of the joy of helping you? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Never thought of that. That was an aha. Be a generous giver and an excellent receiver. Can you repeat that for me? Be a generous giver and an excellent receiver. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, when I help people, I help them in a few ways. I am now, from that blog, I started getting phone calls, and I'm a keynote speaker around the world. I did an event for a um, group and had 100, 100 people live, 150 showed up, and 8,500 people over the internet listening. And I take these rocks, and I find out what's going on in the organization, and I use the rocks to be a storyteller. It's not about me. This is just a setup to being a storyteller. But it's about helping the organization make connections and help the people in the room make connections and empower them to connect with their authentic gifts. Do you understand that? Why am I special? What are my gifts to the world? And that question is the underpinning of how to be a great networker because if you think about it, there are a lot of nonprofit organizations. Are there not a lot of wonderful nonprofit organizations? Yes. Yeah. We're all in competition in some way. So the trick is, networking with heart is about figuring out a couple of key things. It's about figuring out what your gifts are to the world, your organization's gifts are to the communities you serve, and how that connection will let all ships rise with the tide, the win-win. The ladies teed up a beautiful talk. They were, were they awesome this morning? Was this not a great day so far? Thank you, Ms. Kim. So, we're gonna go through this quickly. I don't have a ton of time, but I wanna make it meaningful, and I want you to really, really rock the rest of your day. So my goal is, we're gonna go through, I, I like fill in the blanks, so and make sure you stay awake. You can write at the top of that, be a generous giver and an excellent receiver. My goal for this is the one that says rock on success, rock the room. So my goal is for you today. I would like you to walk out of here with at least one or two really good nuggets. They don't have to be big, long stories. They need to be something you can steal from what I told you that you are going to be able to use and implement today. Today, because you will have another four hours of engagement and interacting with people. I want you to take away things and I want you to use them today. And I want you from this day forward always to go to events with goals and to leave with next best moves. So, next best moves means not just a hundred cards of people you have no idea who's who and what's what. It's about meaningful next steps with people that you actually liked. Can you imagine, did anybody meet someone here they actually really liked that they didn't know before? Mm -hmm. Every hand's not up yet. <laughs> you will, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. You haven't heard yet, I'm gonna show you how. It's all right, cool. You're not gonna like everyone. You may not even like me, that's okay. You're, that's your prerogative. My style is not your style, is not your style. We all have a different mojo, a different vibe, a different way we do business. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. However, you are going to find that you are attracted and gravitate towards certain kinds of people. And one of the first and best networking tips I ever give is when you walk in a room, find the biggest, brightest smile in the room. Because who do you want to speak with? Somebody who's like this, or they're giving a closed circle kind of chit chat? You know, that don't interrupt us kind of thing? Or, what's your name? Kristen. Kristen, what do you do? Loud, loud and proud. Okay. Stand up, loud and proud. Okay. I was the development director for JDRF. I left in April to pursue. Juvenile Diabetes Research yes. Foundation. Yes. I'm good with the acronyms. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I left in April to pursue uh, a career on the other side for a corporate relations, um, like CSR, corporate social responsibility. And who are you working with? Oh, all right, there you go. So, here's your other tip. When we're doing our introductions, this is actually, um, 
This is really important. I'm going to give you an example, and you're going to use this going forward. My name is Pat Roquet. They call me, so there's a, there's a theory. It's your name, what you do, who you serve, how you help them, how they feel when you help them, and who else might you know. Okay, so my name is Pat Roquet. They call me the Rockstar Transformation Coach because I help nonprofits, executives, and entrepreneurs learn to grow their career without losing their mind or selling their soul. I teach them practical ways to connect with their ideal clients so they can stop chasing and start attracting people they actually want to work with. When I help them, they feel no more overwhelmed, they feel rock solid, and they feel super successful. I do this in, as a keynote speaker, a consultant, or a business coach. Who do you know that might need a speaker for their next event or help in that way? Did that sound overly salesy mm -hmm. to you? Did you start to think about anybody in your mind that maybe is feeling this way and might need to feel the transformational way, my before and after? Here's who I am. Here's, it's not the transactional pieces. We're not talking about the airline pilot that says, I go through TSA security and I have my bag and it's only this size and I go there and I'm not allowed to have coffee in the cockpit and I do this and I, right? It's not those little transactional steps or I'm driving from here to there, I get my key, I go in the car, I turn it in, I lock the door, I put it in the, right? Not detail. I didn't get into minutia. I got into, they feel a, no more overwhelmed. They're happy and fulfilled. They're focused, right? So, those kinds of words. I want you to feel how you're gonna feel. I don't want you stuck in the minutia. Because when we do minutia stuff, that becomes verbal vomit. Anybody know what I mean by verbal vomit? All right, write on your papers, no verbal vomit. If you can just remember that one, we're golden. I'm gonna walk through a couple of tips on the sheet so you have some Engagement, you can write a few things down, and this will hopefully be some help. Is this helping you so far, Mr. Paul? Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us who you are and what you do. Stand up, please, sir. We're going to practice, and we're going to do this with love. So if we need to give suggestions or anything, is that okay? We do that with love? Everybody's cool? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I'm Paul D'Alessandro, and they call me Paulie D up here in New Jersey. Paulie D! <laughs> 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 And so I, uh, I have powered on profits to um, have impact in the world through consulting, coaching, and fundraising. And how do they feel when you serve them? Bro, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, they feel wonderful because they now have the tools of success in their hand. Terrific. And who are your ideal clients? Who are you trying to attract? <clears throat> Who's a great referral for you? How about that way? Is that a good way to say it? My best referral would be? My best referral would be a, a client who has taken ownership of their fundraising and um, are successful um, on their own. Okay, so is it an executive director? So I'm, work, I'm drilling yeah. with you. You're okay with me drilling down with you a second? So no, I'm not a dental chair. No, no, no. So, so think about it. Is it a title? Is there, if you typically deal with the executive director or someone in, like just help well, them think about who in the nonprofit. Executive directors, mostly, most of our work comes through a board member who says, you mean, because we've, 25 years we've all been word of mouth. So it's through board and through success in the past. So you're, a great referral would be a board member for a not-for-profit who's looking to, finish the sentence. Who's looking to hire a fundraising consulting firm that wants to increase their uh, fundraising power. And what do they get when they increase it? Do they want to fund a capital campaign, add a building, enhance a program? They want to learn how to fundraise. They want to raise money. They want to have a successful capital campaign. They want their staff to understand what fundraising is. Okay, so maybe they want to increase their fundraising by X percent or X number, two, three times. Things, right? right? You, you see why I'm, I thank you for letting me, letting me kind of interact with you with that. 
I know John is, that's why I did it. Um, we have a mutual friend that we've met through networking and that's how I got here is because I went to Sally Glick's networking, right? Yeah. And Sally Glick, who was the moderator this morning from Sobel and Company, says that when she wakes up in the morning, the first thing she thinks about is who can I connect and who can I serve today? She literally lives that, she breathes it, it's true. And that's how I met Kim and a few other people in the room and lots of other people out in the hallways and many of them are actually leading sessions here because we met in the same place, yes or yes? Correct. Okay, because when I went there, I said, my name is Pat Rocaine, and I went through this thing and I said, I love serving not-for-profits and executives and especially through speaking engagements or through coaching or through workshops. So who do you know that's ever looking for a great speaker, a motivational speaker for their event? Voila, presto change your magico, here we are. Don't ask, don't get friends, giving and receiving. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That was very good, thank you for that. Um, okay, we're gonna look at the sheet and talk about know your why, okay? Might sound simple, but remember they were talking about aligning with values, having your mission, having you and your team on the same page? Know your why. Stay connected to your why. And as a next step, really, really understand who your ideal clients are. And I'm gonna use the word client, uh, collaborator, partner. So for today's exercise, you may be looking for client, depending on who you are in your role, you may be looking for collaborators, probably is a better blanket word, right? Because partners that you can build programs with together, perhaps, maybe clients too, but Who's your ideal client? Stand up, tell everybody in the room who you are in case they don't know. Loud and proud. I'm Lynn Zippo, President and CEO of the Center for Nonprofits, New Jersey's umbrella organization for the charitable community. And who do you serve? Uh, we serve nonprofit organizations throughout New Jersey. So how do you, how do they feel when you help them? Um, relieved, um, educated, Empowered to be more successful in? In fulfilling their missions. Okay. And who would be an ideal connection for you? Um, it's hard to pick just one. But, uh, you gotta and, tell and them or they're not gonna know. If you I leave it vague, uh, then they can't help you. That's so, our challenge. All right. uh, nonprofits uh, of nonprofit leaders, emerging leaders, um, anybody who connects with nonprofits, Philanthropy, policymakers. So, people concerned about cause marketing and nonprofit development in the state of New Jersey? People is who are specific? concerned about the well being of the nonprofit community. And is it in New Jersey specific? New is New there Jersey a specific. geographic? Yes. Okay, so if you happen to have a territorial type of nonprofit, if you're the blah, 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 targeting, assisting people in State County, whatever that is. If you think about as clear as you can be, and this is a practice thing, thank you for sharing. This is a practice thing because you're gonna hone this. When I did this exercise the first time, I did it seven times. It, I kept changing and changing and changing it, right? And I still change it, depending on who I'm with. As I know what my outcome is for the meeting that I'm at. Make sense? So, I'm gonna give you a rock. And I want you to, this is your thank you gift. You're gonna put one word that's special about you on this rock and you're gonna keep it right next to your desk and your computer and not forget. So on those days when everything feels like it's hitting the fan and you're struggling, and not that we ever struggle or have a hard day, right? Yeah. But think about your gift. What's your gift to the world? And of all the things you do, why do you shine? That's the word you put on the rock. You too. All right, two more rocks. Next question, we'll go on. Who is your ideal client? They call it a client avatar, A-V-A-T-A-R. Have you heard of that word? You know what that is? Mm -hmm. So, when you're thinking about connecting, you want to be able to clearly say, and, I, and I'm starting to share this as we go through examples, you want to be able to clearly identify who your home run sweet spot if I could take and have 10 Kim Keatings, my life would be complete. I wouldn't be chasing all these other momos. I would be able to connect with a key influencer 
who gets me, we have a good relationship, we shine similarly but differently, we complement one another, but we think enough alike that the sparks fly. Okay? I try to help people not necessarily chase the onesie twosies. You want to connect with influencers who have tribes of people who think like them. Right? So who are your best, best connection? Your ideal, they could be a client, they could be a collaborator. The old, like Sally Click. Home run, love the woman to death. I've only known her less than a year. If you could clone Sally and have 10 Sallies, yeah. right? Your work would be done. It would be, a, it's just such a pleasure to be around certain people. Sometimes your ideal client is the one that brings you the most money, and granted, I'm not belittling making lots of money. I'm not. I know it says nonprofit, but that doesn't mean we're not supposed to be making money. That just means how we account for it and all that. I get that. But think about, do me a favor and share, if you will. You don't have to say a full name at all, but is there a person? This has got to be minutia. This is a real person. Like, I could say my ideal collaborator is Sally Glick. She's the head of a large organization. She's very involved in the community. She sits on boards. She is a heart-centered connector. And I could go on and I could give you her demographic, her age, her where she lives, what she drinks, all of it. You follow me? And get right down to it. Because if I shut my eyes and click my heels together and said, give me 10 Sally Glicks, whoo, home run, I'd be good. My life would be so much easier, right? So is there someone in your, in your sphere, in your world, that if you could take that person and clone that person, you'd be like, home run, great train. And I'll come back to you if not, but. I was gonna say, I, I would think it's probably going to be certain employees in our firm that are, they have the right um, empowerment to. Can you hear her? Us. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from an accounting firm, so I'm principal in accounting firm, so my staff, like certain staff members, they're able to go out and they're able to connect with other uh, individuals if, that are clients and in networking events. And you know, if I had ten more of those, okay. my life would be so. So is there? Okay, so I'd like you to stand up for a second. I'd like you to do our little exercise. We just we just did and say who you are. Can you can sure. you try that, Judy? Uh, my name is Judy Tutella. I'm from Spire Group. We're a uh, public accounting firm in Livingston and in Clark, New Jersey. Uh, what is your gift to the world and um, who do you serve? Okay, my gift to the world is to provide accounting services, uh, auditing and accounting services to those who need it and uh, work with them to make them better, um, better served by having awesome financial records and getting through their audits without uh, compliance issues. Uh, we work hard to make sure they're educated and trained and uh, can meet all the goals that they need. Okay. Next time you do that, we're gonna get less about the keys in the ignition and we're gonna do a little bit more about we support not-for-profit leaders be, by making them more able to retain more of the money that they've raised and put it to better use for their cause. I don't know if that's about right, but is that close? Right? I agree. Throw out the details of the keys and think about, right, if you're going on vacation, you're not thinking about the passport and the other stuff, you're thinking about the pina colada on the beach in Aruba. Right? That's kind of, or wherever your vacation mind goes. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So next time you think of a pina colada on the beach in Aruba, you think of me. Right. And that's what I want you to think about as you're introducing people. So your ideal networker is you're looking to recruit more people into your team right. who then, because that's who she's serving. Do you understand that? So if she could take, so there's probably, let's make up Jerry. I'm going to give him a name. Jerry. Or Jerry, a guy or girl? It's a girl. And how old is she? She is 27. Is she married, single? Just married. Uh, where does she hang out? Uh, what does she do for fun? You know, I don't even really know so much. Okay. You're going to want to know these things. I know who drinks what kind of wine versus scotch versus they play golf, they like soccer, they take their family, are they Mets or Yankees, are they Giants or Jets? You need to know these things. LinkedIn makes it really easy to know these things about the people you, you want to be dealing with. 
great thing to do. So, did that help you? Yes. <laughs> Take the time to get to know the people in your circle who you value. Tell them you value them. Tell them, you know what, I know we're busy, but can we grab coffee one day or maybe lunch? Or Find a way to make 20 minutes together, and maybe 20 minutes becomes an hour, but show them you care about them as a person. That's networking. It's not about trying to sell them stuff. It's stuff. Right? Because you want them, you need to build your own personal brand. I don't care what company you're with now. This is about connecting so you build your personal brand. So you can carry that relationship through your career. This is not about you being a slave to ABC company. Because you know what? It used to be I worked for ABC company. I could have one job for 35 years, get a gold watch, and retire. Anybody feeling that way lately? Not so much. So part of your networking is your own personal brand building. It's your own career security. I don't say job, because I have a lot of people who've had jobs and now that job went away, whether they were forced into retirement or they lost their funding, like my one gig did, whatever it happens to be. Things happen out of your control. I'm giving you power so you have things that are in your control. Networking smart is in your control. Yes or yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you got a rock, by the way. I got one more. So, who's your ideal client? Everybody clear? Yes? You're awake? Yes. Okay. Establish pre-game pre -game rituals. Research. The attendees and the presenters. Did anybody go on LinkedIn or look up who was actually speaking or attending to any kind of homework to figure out who else was going to be here today? Raise your hand. Okay, half of you. Next time, all of you, promise, raise your hand, right hand, I promise. To research, to research the people, the people. at the event I'm attending. At the event I'm attending. So I can rock the room. So I can rock the room. And network with heart. And network with heart. And leave with action items. And leave with action items. So I can attract. So I can attract. The people I will love working with. The people I would love working with. Wow! Hello! Isn't that Where's good? this? So help me God. So <laughs> help me God. So you get it. All right, so LinkedIn is one of the easiest, most simple ways. I use Facebook, I didn't used to, and now I actually use Facebook to grow my business as well. But, quick example, LinkedIn almost, is everybody who, is everybody here on LinkedIn for the most part? Mm -hmm. If you're not, you should be. I teach a course on that, we'll talk about it, but it's a great place because you can see people's favorite project. You can see where they went to college. Like my daughter just graduated University of Delaware. Those blue hens are crazy. There's something about the Kool-Aid they drink down at Delaware. <laughs> I swear to God. The loyalty, and there's a lot of other universities that have that same wonderful thread. So I, if I'm reading someone and I say blue head, they start jumping up and down. It's the craziest thing. And they'll do anything I ask them to do. It's really crazy, but it's true. Maybe they, you can see who's looking for a position on a pro bono. Do you know that's actually one of these pieces? Please come on in and join us. That is actually one of the pieces at the bottom of LinkedIn. It says, what kind of position are you looking for? And it says if you're looking for pro bono work or working with charity. I forgot the exact words. But it actually says that on LinkedIn at the bottom of people's profile. You can check that off and say that's what you're interested in. Anybody think that's a valuable place to look for some new collaborators? So you can find out. I found out who's here. And then I went to Kim or to Sally Click or a couple of the people that I know and they know me and said, I would really appreciate meeting so and so. Or when I, I did you notice I asked a question before in the meeting? Was anybody there this morning? I always ask a question because I got to stand up and say my name and let people hear a little sentence about who I am and my gift and that I happen to have money for funding if I can find the right partners. And what did Sally say? I need to spend time with you. Right? Was that a home run? If Sally Glick said we need to talk, should we talk? Probably we'll talk. Does that make sense, guys? Do your homework. Nail the intro format, 10 seconds, 90 seconds longer. What we just practice comes in different versions and different flavors. When I do my coaching, my actual program, I teach that and we go through it and we go around the room and everybody gets to practice. But think about it. 
Um, Meadowlands Chamber, anybody here from the Meadowlands Chamber has been to a Meadowlands Chamber meeting? Okay, so they, I use them as an example because they are big believers in networking. They do these 90 second introductions. Often the format will be around a 90 second thing. You know that on the third Thursday of the month, you're going to have, and they'll tell you in advance, this is the theme and here's how you're gonna get the opportunity. So they'll say, 90 seconds, round robin, two tables of, 20, of 10, so there's 20 people, I'm in the chair twice, 18 people that I know I'm gonna be able to go with. So I make sure I never sit with any of my friends, I purposely split from anybody that I already know their story. I wanna be with 18 new people, ideally, and I go in with my 90 second version of what we just did. Not a 20 second version and not a four minute version. 90 seconds is 90 seconds. You have the advantage of being told in advance that that is the spec. Why not be killing it, right? Do you practice your 90 seconds? Am I right? Am I exaggerating or am I right? No, and it makes a difference. The people who know how to do it in your table and the people who don't. <laughs> and I send my card to all the people who don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because they've just wasted such an opportunity. They've had 18 opportunities to now tell their story in the appropriate way to derive the next step. We know that we went there to be able to see who we could meet who might want to do business with us. That's why you went. Does that make sense? Tell me, you might as well stand up. You're gonna get a rock for this one. Tell me who you are and why you shine and how we can help you. Um, I'm Lynn Algren, I'm the CEO of the Bergen Volunteer Center. Um, uh, the way that I uh, serve my customers, I think, is because I'm a really innovative thinker. And I think people feel um, when they're done that there are many more possibilities uh, for the work that they do and the way that they do it. Um, we help people turn their caring into meaningful action. And my ideal client or customer is somebody who not only wants to make a meaningful difference in the lives of others, um, but also wants to make a meaningful difference through our organization. Oh, can she get yeah. clap? Come on. Oh, Anybody think that, that was powerful? Please raise your hand. Anybody think that was powerful? What was so good about what she just did? Who, who has a compliment? Who's going to give her a shout out? Somebody. What did she do well? It sounds like she has thought about uh, who she is and what her value is to the world, really. Um, and also what the value of your organization is, which I think is also really, uh, really well done, the way you, you put that all together. And, you know, I could think of many people who would benefit from what you have to offer. I would add that you spoke from the heart, and if you look into your eyes, you can see your message. Oh, Listen, thank you, Phil Pateri. That was very, very good. Mm -hmm. Rock on, that was beautiful. Was that not beautiful? Seriously. Yeah. Okay, I don't have a criticism. Not, and not that I'm criticizing anyone, it's, it's really, really said with love and it's meant because I have made every mistake I speak of, I've made all of them. That's the only reason I have the credibility to stand here and help you is because I've screwed up enough that my goal, people tell me one of my gifts is helping you really cut to the chase and shortcut your learning curve. Because I will be raw and I will tell you all the stupid things I've done or the things that cost me time or money over, over time, the things that slowed me down, that's the brilliance of the way I coach people or when I do the workshops. It's really meant, you don't want to hear me verbal vomit about myself, but I do it in a humble way in that being successful and sobbing and successful, you know, and everything in between, if I could share one or two little nuggets that have really change, it's those pivot moments. Did you see when she said, I feel, and they feel, did you notice how she got the heart mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. was that not very easy mm -hmm. and natural, mm -hmm. and did that sound salesy? Nope. Mm -hmm. Right? You get it? Thank you. Thank you. What did you put on your rock, by the way? Innovative. Innovative, beautiful. Okay, we've got 10 minutes, we're gonna go quick. So, get involved. Volunteer, ask a question, donate a door prize or all of the above. Make sense? Be the person at the registration desk. Be the one that sells the 50-50 tickets. Get involved. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be the speaker or the presenter to be involved. There's lots of hands. Could you use more hands when you do these kinds of things? Always. And when you do that, do you not develop relationships with people because you've now spent a little time and they 
they've gone out of their way and don't do things differently on how you can help them because you know how better. Yes? Yes. Got it? Make sense? Mm -hmm. How about stand out in the crowd, quality, attire, business cards, look the part. I have a networking wardrobe. You notice this is like kind of, I, I feel good in it. Maybe you don't love it, but for me, I feel good in it. I always wear a pretty color, something that I feel good in. I don't typically wear all solid, you know, black, whatever. I try to always wear something uplifting because when you go in a crowd, if there's 100 people or 500 people, the chances become more and more that, especially as the winter comes around, that more people will all start to blend in. And you can always, always, not that you can hear me with my big mouth, but you can always at least find me if not hear me. And I, that's something special that I actually do do. Um, etiquette. Um, don't be obnoxious and verbal vomit. Show sincere interest in helping and referring. So what would you rather me say, Marisol? How can you help me? Marisol, how can you help me? Or Marisol, who would be an ideal referral for you that I can help you with? Which sounded better? Right? Either way, I'm gonna to get to know Marisol. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to stand up and say who you are and what you do, but do you follow the, the, that simple little thing? Who can I help you with? Who can I refer? I told you when you do your introduction, when it's your turn, I want you to say who the ideal referral is. But if you're just meeting someone, I usually will ask people what's their favorite thing they're working on right now that I can support or my network can support. It may not be something I can support, maybe, not necessarily, but I've got a huge network. I've got 4,000 people on LinkedIn, another four or 5,000 on Facebook, and a tribe you can't imagine. So not me, then someone. So. Tell us who you are, why you shine. Practice, but please, if you don't mind. Okay, I'm just trying to write it down, I didn't finish. But anyway. My name is Marisol Rodriguez. Turn the face panel. My name is Marisol Rodriguez, and I'm the Executive Director of Renew Life Center here in Patterson. Uh, we run transformational educational programs that help people out of poverty. Okay, no, feel free, that's where you're for practice. Poverty. Um, we generally focus on single moms, but we do also help other people in the community. Um, the people that do take our transformational program um, experience a renewed hope for their future and for the future of their children, and they are very excited to get into the job market and get ahead. And who's an ideal referral? Um, an ideal referral for me at this time would be someone who could be a passionate board member or um, volunteer. Wonderful. How'd you do? Excellent. Now, it's easy when you're towards the end of the workshop and you're just the beginning, so we're going to just take all that in. Very, very good. Thank you. Congratulations for doing that. Um, oh, last rock. So, I appreciate that. We're going to run around. Oh, no. All right. You work on that. Accountability. Follow up promptly. How can my network serve you, which I just said? Call. Now, I like to say call 10 leads a day. Maybe that's not part of it. Maybe you don't call them leads. But my point here is, if you're in any kind of a business development type of a role, set a cadence for yourself. Set a goal and say, I need to reach X number of people this week and chunk out your time and do that. Also, compliment or thank three people every day. How hard is it for you to reach out and say, you know what, Kim, thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve people. Had a great time. Looking forward to seeing you Thursday at blah, blah, blah. How long would that take me? 30 seconds, a minute, maybe? Text them, call them, email them, post it on Facebook. Give other people props, shout out. Doesn't that make you feel good? Wouldn't you feel nice that just showed up? Especially when they're random. You always want to do the thank yous for the obvious stuff that just happened. But those little random, keep a tickler list. Go back. Thank people. Keep checking. You know your clients and friends' birthdays? Everybody? Facebook makes that really easy. <laughs> or LinkedIn, they show their anniversaries for stuff. Don't just hit the send button with the standard one. Always put something personal so they know you actually care and actually know them. Because the semi-strangers that are on their list are going to do that. Congratulations on writing that standard thing. Mm -hmm. Put something personal. Sound good? Easy? These are easy things, but they're smart. They're really smart. 
great networking venues, in person, online, host a webinar, host a teleseminar. There's a thing called meetup.com. Anybody know about meetup? People put their preferences, so if they like the environment and they like nonprofits or whatever, it's a great group. I have a group you are all welcome to join. It's called Business Boomers Golf for Health, Wealth, and Fun. Golf is one of my favorite places to network. I do a program called Rock Your Golf. I am a published author, and I will come into your golf outing. I can do a pre-event and help people learn how to become a better volunteer, how to get more golfers involved, how to get more sponsors. So totally rock your golf outing. It's one of the programs I love doing for nonprofits, and I'm raffling off an $1,800 gift prize at my table, which means um, an hour private coaching with me, a copy of the book autographed, a one-hour teleseminar for your team on whatever topic you would like, and some nice swag. So that's all part of it. Always have best next moves. So you see this sheet? Did I get all the answers on this front page for you? I think I did, right? Pretty sure I did. Anybody have a question? Which one do you? Which one are you missing? Best next moves. Oh. Opt in for email. Ask people for their email. You've got to give them something of value so that they want to be on your email. So when I do this, here's the greatest swipe sheet ever made. This has changed my career and my outcomes of when I go to events, especially when I teach. Anybody here aspire to be a speaker and do what I'm doing right now? Or do you, do you lead groups, whether it be in front of two people or 25? Or This is the best way to swipe file you will ever find because this has changed my action items dramatically. So I'm going to ask every one of you right now to get the speaker evaluation form in front of you with a pen. The top part, if you make it generic, you can use it for a lot of your events. So you don't have to keep repeating stuff over and over. That's a really good thing. Using templates is important, right? So the top is a checkbox of how did I do? Was the speaker's knowledge around the topic great? If it's awesome, put it a five. If I stink, make it a one. Um, my style. Again, I know that my style is not for everyone, but that's okay. Did it resonate for you or not? Um, pace and timing. Did I try to get a lot and give you really great value for the amount of time we were given? Yes, or could we do better? Um, program content. Was this something of value? Did you guys learn something? Yes? Okay, so then we take the overall score. The next section, what ideas did you find most helpful? This part I leave open-ended because it really helps me to hear from your words what was valuable. Because I'm not here babbling, hopefully, it shouldn't be me babbling because it's what I have to sell or what I have to teach. This is supposed to be me sharing information that's of value to you. This also becomes great testimonial if you decide you want to put something and it's shareable. You're welcome to do that. Then I know who to follow up with for a testimonial. Does that make sense? So ask check boxes because they're quick. Ask for testimonial. And then at the bottom, so how can I improve? If there are things I can do better or different, please tell us. I'm sure Kim would like to know and I would like to know. And are there any additional comments? So that's your middle section. Again, steal this form. This form will, will help you so, so much, I promise. And then at the bottom, what are your next best moves? So here are the things that I like to make available to people. I will do a free 30-minute consult with anybody who wants to, I call it channel your inner rock star. It's to help you figure out clarity of vision for you, for your personal brand in your company or in transition, doesn't matter. But clarity of vision, a smart action item, and I promise you will feel more energized, more focused, and ready to kick some rocking butt from a call. If you want it, it's available. Um, if you need someone to present to your group, your organization, your team, then you check it off. If you want an autographed copy of Rock Your Golf, I have them out there. My new book is uh, almost done. It's called Rock On Success. It's basically the non-golf book. I help people focus in 90-day increments because I find that that's a really powerful way to be accountable, to set goals, and figure out how to now adopt them into your day, your week, your month, to be accountable. So that's that. Or I have a free um, Rock On Success is my Facebook group 
We do a lot of sharing. We get to shine and tell each other who we are, and a lot of collaboration happens there. Yeah, so I basically, through the worksheet, if you are interested, you fill it out, you put your email and your phone number. You don't have to if no one's holding your hand, but what I do is I can then take the results and I share them back as a report to Kim, to the organizer of the event, and then she'll know, well, that was great, we should have Pat do something else, or I can refer proudly, or, ooh, she's stunk and I'm not gonna do that again. Right? It gives you that chance. So, um, network with heart, never hesitate to be yourself, you will attract the right people. If you put the energy out, you will attract the right people back. Don't worry about what you're not doing. I want you to have two. Oh, I'm done, I just turned into a pumpkin. I want you to book at least, let's say two to three appointments. What's fair? Right, is three appointments fair, everybody? Is that a fair number? Set a goal for yourself and now spend the rest of the afternoon putting this into practice. Try it and see how it feels, but I want you to leave when you get in the car today, I want you to be happy that you have outcomes and next best moves. Sound good? Rock, rock the day, everybody. Thank you very, very, very much.